G'day folks, today I'm going to introduce the frame BLE package. You can see it there on the web page on the Python package index. It's the low level Bluetooth library for accessing Brilliant Labs frame. There is a higher level library as well, but this one I'm going to just introduce the simplest, lowest level one, and it's called frame BLE. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to run the example hello world program that comes on the readme page for that package. It's pretty straightforward, uh, but let's let's just jump into it. I'm on Win a Windows machine and I'm using Python. On your platform, it might be Python 3 and things like that. But I'm also going to just put a virtual environment in just to make sure that when I install packages, they are all localized to this project and not spread across the whole system. So I'm just going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to make a directory for this demo, frame BLE demo. I'm going to jump into that directory. And as I mentioned, I'll just make a virtual environment and I'll call it .vnv. And that's just going to make sure that all these packages are just inside this folder. So when I delete this folder, it all goes away as well. And then I need to activate it. On your platform, this command might look a tiny bit different, but this is just regular Python vn for stuff. But on my platform, Windows, this is going to be in a directory called scripts. And then you'll see that it's now activated in this uh, Python virtual environment. Anyway, so now when I do my pip install, it'll just be uh, localized to this package. So this is how, this to this folder, sorry. So pip install frame BLE. It only actually depends on the bleak BLE library, Bluetooth low energy library in Python. So it's pretty lean. It's just a thin wrapper over that. And now I'm going to just create this. I'll just copy this file exactly as it is. And I might use, say, Notepad to put this together, although I would normally use something like VS Code. I'll just keep this one really simple. And so this is uh, a basic Python program. You'll notice it's got asynchronous. I'll talk through it in a minute, but let's just run it and see if it works for starters. So this is a very simple program. If I now run Python, main.py. If you have a look at the, I've got a webcam pointed at frame over there. Let's have a look and see what happens. Oh, hello frame. Perfect. So let's just quickly dive into how did that happen? If I maybe zoom into this one just a tiny bit, then we might be able to see. So what's happening here? So like I mentioned, we use this async IO library because the messaging between the host and frame is a bit asynchronous. We send messages over um, and then we try to wait for things to finish and so on. So we're going to be using quite a few await uh, statements, awaited statements. We're just importing this one class from the frame BLE package and inside this asynchronous method, we're just going to gr grab instantiate one of those frame BLEs. We're going to await this call to connect and that when that returns that will be connected otherwise if there is no frame there or something you'd get an exception and then we're just going to do this thing called send lua now it turns out that frame runs lua on on its chip and that's a nice little language for embedded programming actually and so we can send custom strings of lua over and that code will execute and the way this line works uh, in lua you can put all your statements in one line doesn't matter this is actually putting three statements together all in one. And so it's got this display text statement, which will render this text onto the display. Well, in fact, it renders it onto the back buffer of the display. If you're familiar with graphics programming, you'll know that often you do your draw calls onto a back buffer. And then when you've completed all of them, you, you flip the buffers uh, around. And so that's what this second call is, this show. So we've just done one draw call here, but we could have done you know three text draw calls and then drawn an image or something like that, and then done one show call. And that would show all of those things at once. And then there's one third statement here, which is print nil. And the reason why we've put a print here at the end is just so that when this code has all executed, the byte that's printed here will get sent back on the string uh, 
channel back to the host program and so it will be able to tell that this code is executed this is a very short piece of code but if it was a much longer piece of code that did it spend a bit of time doing a bit of work and you really wanted to know when it was finished so you could trigger the next call or something like that then you really do want to wait for some confirmation that that code is finished otherwise you'll interrupt frame doing the last one to send it the next bit of work so that's one of the reasons why it's quite asynchronous this programming and it works this way with this await print command so in fact the send lua function works this way that when you say await print then it's going to block until it gets it it gets some text back from frame in this case there's nothing important that has to come back we just need to know something came back so we just print nil and then we await it and then we can disconnect from frame but if we didn't await this command or if we didn't await print then that disconnect might show up too early before we've even printed the text and so we wouldn't want to do that. So that's why there's this. That's why the send lua works this way. Uh, and that's really all, to, all there is to it. This is an asynchronous function here, so we call it in this way uh, in Python when we're using that library. Um, the good news is as well, when you're writing more complex applications, you don't need to send handcraft strings of lua and send them to frame. You can use much higher level objects to to express your intent and I'll use I'll do examples of that and that's using the frame message package instead of frame BLE but this low level library gives you everything you need to drive frame uh, but you would might build a bit of framework on top of it if you're building a more complex application but anyway that's the example I hope that's been clear let me know if you have any questions about it thanks a lot